Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about what is the difference between inpatient and outpatient coding? What do they do? What are the different types of coders? Um, thank you for joining me today. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. If you're just joining me, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. Um, on my channel, I share stories about medical coding and all the tips and tricks and, and all the stories that goes along with this field. <laughs> um, I hope you hit that notification bell so you know anytime I have a brand new episode out. And if this video helps you by the end, I hope you hit that thumbs up button and I hope you'll share it with all of your friends. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so medical coding, right? You want to get into it, it sounds exciting, and then you find out there's a difference between inpatient and outpatient coding, and there's different books, and there's different credentials, and what the heck? <laughs> Blue, break it down. Tell me, what, tell me what it's all about. Okay, so let's start out with the easier of me to explain of the two, which is outpatient coding. So there's inpatient coding and there's outpatient coding. Outpatient coding sounds just like it sounds outpatient. These are your clinic visits, like at the hospital, a patient comes into the hospital um, to visit the clinic or uh, like a freestanding um, doctor's office. They go in for their appointment that same day and then they leave. Okay. That's an outpatient visit. Okay. Anything that goes along with that. So basically like all of your doctor's visits, um, like for eyeglasses and things like that, all that's outpatient. Okay. Then you have the inpatient side. Anytime you have, you're talking about inpatient, it is literally a patient that is in a bed in a hospital. That is inpatient, okay? They have different rules for coding inpatient versus outpatient. And there's different uh, reimbursement methods and everything. <laughs> but we're just going to kind of brush over some of these things. Now, inpatients that are in a hospital are not the same as inpatients that are like in, in, a, in a prison, right? Or like a jail infirmary. Those are considered outpatient visits as well. It's like um, how like urgent care is, it's same thing, it's outpatient. Just because they're staying in the prison doesn't mean they are inpatient, okay? It's not, it doesn't fall under that. It's still outpatient. Same thing with nursing homes, okay? Nursing homes have different codes um, but they, they fall under the procedures, okay? And they are different, they're, they're, it's different care, but it's still considered outpatient, outpatient coding, okay? So that is the difference between the two. So inpatients are only people who are in the hospital staying in a bed, okay? So again, there's lots of different rules when it comes to coding outpatient and inpatient, okay? Now, what are the credentials that go along with these? Okay, just so we, we already understand, all right? Now, if you want to be an outpatient coder, basically you want to work in clinics or you want to work in a freestanding doctor's office, um, if you are doing something like that, there is, with AHIMA, there's the CCS, which is a Certified Coding Specialist. Um, that credential says that you can code both inpatient and outpatient. And that is the gold standard of medical coding credentials. And I call it the gold standard because of the simple fact that it says that you can code both inpatient and outpatient. Um, you can get all these other credentials um, with AAPC. They do have what is called the CIC or the Certified Inpatient Coder. And if people who have that can code inpatient, um, but they also would if the, if they want something for like the CPC, which is the outpatient side uh, credential, certified professional coder, um, then they would have two credentials, CIC and CPC. Now, just because you have two credentials versus the one credential, it doesn't mean it's it's oh it's more money. It's not that. It's it's the caliber of the coder, and it is how you are are being able to produce records and things like that, how you're able to code and things like that. What is your accuracy? That has a lot to do with it. That plays a huge part in it. Um, but having the right credential will of course get you in the right place, right? Because you can't try to be an inpatient coder um, if you have like uh, no experience coding inpatient, right? And then you, and you have a, like a, a CPC, which is the outpatient side. Well, did you have any training with inpatient? No. Okay. Well, that's not going to be the right fit for you, right? So it is all about having the correct credential. Um, but a lot of people will sort of mix uh, those things up as far as like, 
where it lo the location of the patient is, thinking it may be like inpatient. No, there, it's, it's completely different. There are the two separates, okay? Uh, but the goal to remember inpatient is they are inpatient in a physical hospital, okay? Not anywhere else. And everything else is going to be considered essentially outpatient, okay? Now, on, on the outpatient side, we have to code things that are based on facts. We code things that are definitive. Um, if there is no formal diagnosis made, then we take what did the patient come in with? What were their symptoms? Okay, and sometimes this will happen. Sometimes a patient will present and let's just say for their, for instance, they are injured because I am an orthopedics nerd and I love coding orthopedics and I like using this example because a lot of people get confused with this one. Okay, so patient comes in with pain, right? They say they, they hurt their, um, hurt their wrist, right? They hurt their left wrist and, um, they were uh, playing football and when they went to catch the ball, it, it hyperextended their wrist, right? So the, now their wrist hurts. So they're coming in with left wrist pain. Okay, well, how did you get this pain? Well, um, let's, uh, I, I was playing football and I hyperextended my wrist. Okay, let's take an x-ray. So they take an x-ray and then they find out that um, there's some swelling. They can't really see what's going on yet. They don't know if it's fractured. They don't know if it's a sprain, but they're going to go ahead and treat it like, uh, you know, with a, with a, with a brace. Okay. This is an injury. It's not going to be pain. This is an injury because technically we have an injury. The, the sub patient had something happen to them. Okay. When that ball hit their hand and it hyperextended their wrist, it did something to the body. The body was impacted. So anytime you have something happen to the patient, it's not going to be pain. It's going to be um, injury, at least on the outpatient side of the house. Now, when it comes to the inpatient side of the house, they are coding things presumptively. What are they treating presumptively? Um, so like if they are treating, they are being admitted for the flu and they're getting them on fluids and things like that, but they don't have a positive fluid test, a fluid, <laughs> positive flu test yet, um, but they're still presumptively treating them for the flu they can select the flu on the outpatients, I mean, on the inpatient side, because of the simple fact that that is what, what they are presumptively treating this patient for, okay? All of the hospital's resources are going into treating this patient for the flu. So um, whether they come back with the flu or something else, that is really up to what happens on the labs. But I'm just saying that um, things like that are, are coded on the inpatient side. So. Again, there's different rules for coding both inpatient and outpatient. So <laughs> that was just one of the, um, some, some of the, uh, you know, examples that I have. Um, but again, it's, it's really going to depend on which setting that you want to code in. For the outpatient side, we use both, both um, sides, I will say, use the ICD-10-CM book. That is the diagnosis book. Both both uh, inpatient and outpatient use that. But the only difference is when you are coding for the procedures on the outpatient side, you're going to be using what is called the current procedural terminology book or the CPT book, okay? Sometimes they'll say it's CPT-4. CPT-4 just means current procedural terminology fourth edition. It is not a different set of codes. It is all the same. Um, there is an excellent book out there. The um, This is not an ad, but um, the CPT Professional Edition by the AMA is a wonderful resource. The Expert Edition um, for the CPT by Optum360 Coding is also a wonderful uh, resource because it has different information in it, okay? But on the out patient side and you're looking at this CPT book, it's, it's going to house all of your evaluation and management. And if you're new and you don't know what evaluation and management means, evaluation and management is basically the entire picture of what that provider did, um, their cognitive work. It's the level of their cognitive work. Uh, if they're eligible to get an evaluation and management. Sometimes with some of their um, procedures that they perform, the evaluation and management is essentially built in, or they don't, or they're, for that particular visit, they're just not eligible for an evaluation and management. It's really going to depend. Again, <laughs> I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start doing more back to the basics and explaining this, some of this stuff, breaking it down. Um, I just, 
I haven't done it because I've been getting a full schedule lately, which is wonderful. I'm so excited. So anyway, um, but getting back to that, like, right, squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> um, but when you are coding the outpatient side, that is where all your evaluation and management codes are going to be, right? Uh, that is where all your procedure codes are going to be and your radiology and um, just all of those types of codes, okay? There is another book called a Hicks Picks book. It's HCPCS. And this book is also frequently used on the outpatient side of the house. It houses all of the codes, the, the uh, product codes for like inserts, uh, like shoe inserts, like for like podiatry would issue, or it'll um, have codes for like band-aids or uh, gauze wraps, uh, wheelchairs, crutches, things like that. So anything that perhaps the clinic is issuing, they're gonna be housed in the Hicks Picks book. I don't really um, talk about that book too much. I need to see if I have an old book because I know I don't have a new book. I did not get issued a new Hicks Picks book. Um, but, because they only order limited supply. And so since my clinic really doesn't issue like a lot, um, or they issue a lot, but they issue a lot of the same one, uh, some other coders grabbed the book before I could get it whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, but this, like I said, this book is going to house all of your like extra things, all your extra equipment and things like that. So, um, but yeah, it's frequently used on the outpatient side of the house. And that is how you're able to mark everything that is being issued to this patient or being done for this patient or the doctor's cognitive work um, based on the e &M level. So that is what that is on that side. If you are coding for the inpatient side of the house, right? So inpatient is going to use obviously the ICD-10-CM book for the diagnosis, but it is going to use the PCS book. It's called an ICD-10-PCS. And sometimes people get that confused, right? They're like, wait a minute, I'm, I already have an ICD-10 book. Yes, you have an ICD-10-CM, right? <laughs> um, but the PCS book is the inpatient procedures. All of the procedures that are performed in patient are going to be housed in this book. So like um, if a patient gets admitted and they are getting a joint replacement, right? Again, with the ortho talk. <laughs> um, if they're getting a joint replacement, right? And, and they, they, have, uh, they have to break it down. And so that the code has to be built. So it's going to be based on like, you know, what the reason was, the approach, and, and things like that. What is the goal of this um, procedure and that kind of thing. So inpatient procedure coding is way different from outpatient procedures, like the structure of the code. So the structure of the code on the CPT side or the outpatient side, they already have that whole book. The whole book is full of, of all the different codes, everything, all the procedures, everything. It's already there. It, it'll have the code and then it'll have um, the description of the code and all that, okay? On the inpatient side, when you're using that PCS book, that PCS book is there, right? But you have to select the code as, as you're going um, because not everybody's going to have the same approach for the same procedure, okay? And sometimes there's going to be different approaches. There's going to be complications and things like that. So those procedures are going to be coded based on the individual, okay? There's still a set number, right, of, of characters that have to be in this code, but uh, it's going to be based on, on what the surgical approach was and, you know, what was the goal and things like that. And that's on the inpatient side. It's really going to depend on who your teacher is because your teacher... <laughs> can confuse you or it can make it really easy. So it really all depends on what happens uh, when you are learning the inpatient side of the house. I have spent my entire career on the outpatient side, which is why I'm very strong in outpatient. I've had only instruction with inpatient. So like I said, it's really going to depend. And sometimes people will say, inpatient is so easy to code. I don't know how you stand to do outpatient. Outpatient to me is so simple, especially when you can look in the book and you can get the code and that's it and then you're done. <laughs> that's what I like. On the inpatient side, you have more chance for error because you have to select these different characters to make the code. And so when you when you do that, it increases your risk for for error, you know? So I don't know. But 
you know, that is just my opinion on that one. Uh, like I said, some people find inpatient very easy or they find it easier than the outpatient side. Again, it's going to be all your preference. So when you're getting trained, you can get a good idea of what um, you're going to be up against. And then when you're out applying for jobs, if you've been trained to be both inpatient and outpatient, it is going to increase your chances exponentially to get a job because your credential says that you can, you've been trained to code both, which is what the CCS is for. Now, if you already have your CPC and you've gone back to get your CIC, your certified inpatient coder, and you're out there and you're armed with your two credentials now, then, you know, of course, that's going to make you look good. But don't, don't go getting excited and go get multiple credentials. The thing about having multiple credentials is this. Some people will say, well, I got my uh, CPC. Let me, let me see what other ones I can get. Oh, I can get a CPB, which is a certified professional biller. If you, here's the thing about the certified professional biller. And I know it's a little bit off topic, but I wanted to go ahead and bring it up while I, I was thinking about it. If you want to get the CPB, which is offered through um, AAPC, the reason to get something like that is if you are running your own practice, right, for, for billing. Because fundamentally, billers do not have to be certified at all. Do I think it, uh, it would be better if they were certified coders? Yes, because then they would understand what is going on. However, industry standards, they don't have to be, which is fine, okay? But the thing is, if you're going to get the CPB, at least be running your own business because I mean, yeah, you can have it when you go out and you're and you're applying for jobs, but you still got to be able to maintain that and you still got to be able to pay for your exam and you still got to be able to pay for all these other things. So think about it because the more alpha of an alphabet you have after your name, the more money it's going to cost you. Now, not to discourage anybody from getting more credentials, but I want you all to consider this carefully. Yes, you have to pay for all of those credentials. And not to mention, if you are a member of the associations, you have to pay to, to maintain your membership as well. So you got to pay to maintain those credentials and you got to pay for your continuing education units and you got to pay for the, excuse me, the association dues. If you are with AAPC, they do require you to be a member with them. OK, um, it, and, and that's that's what they're requiring. Um, and I'm not sure after you've taken your test, if they still require it or not, maybe they don't, but with, um, but to like maintain your credentials, I'm sure you have to pay a fee, right? Uh, whether you're a member or not. And with, um, AHIMA, you don't have to be a member of AHIMA at all. When you have their, uh, credentials, you do have to pay for credential maintenance. Yes. And you do have to pay to submit your, um, continuing education units. Yes. Uh, but as far as being a member of them, you don't have to. So I'm not really quite sure about AAPC because I'm not an AAPC member. Um, and I probably should have looked that up before I started talking about it. Oh, well. <laughs> um, but you guys can can look it up too as well. Uh, but yes, so that is the difference between the two. And, and that is what they would do. Um, I did do a video about the different credentials and what settings they would apply to. So uh, if you're interested, I will go ahead and probably link it down in the description box because I would put it in the cards, but the cards, whenever I'm like watching the playback on the cards, it's, it annoys me, right? <laughs> when the cards pop up and I'm like, hmm, maybe, I don't know, maybe put it at the end. I don't know. I'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. Today was a heck of a day. I'm just going to say that. Um, but um, yes, so I hope this clears it up. I hope you guys get it now as far as like what goes inpatient and outpatient. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of different questions and it's a lot of uh, learning new things. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's never dull. I'll, I'll say that it's never dull. Whether you're on the outside or in the inpatient side, um, it really is never dull. So it's really, uh, at the end of the day, it's really gonna depend. Some, some coders like the idea of getting specialized in different credentials and like going specialty for certain things. And, and it's cool to do that. Uh, I think it's good to be a well-rounded coder as well and to be able to code anything anywhere at any time. Uh, I think that's a good thing because it, it gives you so many more options for your 
professional future, okay? It's all about continual coder development. Never stop learning. That's the thing I gotta say. And I tell people this all the time. I even tell my coworkers, never stop learning. Never, ever stop learning. Because when you stay stuck in a rut, it's easy to get burnt out, right? When you're, when you're doing the same thing over and over again and you're staying monotonous. But if you are trying to learn different things, and even if you have spent your entire career in the outpatient side, but you wanna learn inpatient and you start to learn inpatient, good for you. Same thing if you're on the inpatient side and you wanna transition to the outpatient side and you're trying to um, make sure that you, you take all these classes and you're trying to learn and things like that, good for you. Because again, it's, you're only gonna benefit yourself if you are trying to learn all of these different things. Because say for instance, you, you get a job and it's a great job, right? But then you hear about another place, right? <sighs> There is one company that I would love to work for because it's like the Disneyland of, of companies. I can't say it on here. I can't say it on here, but I'm just saying they do a lot of traveling. And I've even heard of them that they go like overseas to Dubai and things like that. I'm like, oh, wow. I went to a conference. It was like, uh, it, was a, it was a boot camp, right? It was a inpatient, outpatient boot camp and um, with a HEMA. And they were, they had the representatives there from this company. And they, when they started saying about Dubai and, and all the other places that they traveled and they went to England and they went to all these other places because they were doing the, um, the ramp up for, um, this was when we were ramping up for ICD-10, but they had been going over there to like these other places and these companies to train the other people. And I'm like, oh, that would be like an awesome job to have. But they said, yeah, they travel a lot. And I'm like, wow. So of course I'm excited about this, you know, but uh, you you really have to be like creme de la creme and I'm always striving for that. I'm always trying to reach that and uh, you have to be, you have to have all these degrees and stuff like that. So like I said, <laughs> one thing at a time, I'm working on it, but I'm just saying that would be an awesome job to have, but it's a goal to shoot for if you if you want to do different things or if you want to do your own your own um, coding you know your own coding company that's something else to think about too you have to be prepared for different settings you know and you have to really kind of know that way you can broaden your horizons and you don't have any limitations it's about not having any limitations and that's the thing right there when you don't have limitations in your work um, that's 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 freedom and to me, I've always said the expression, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. I don't feel like I'm working, even on the days that I have hard days. I have hard days too. I do. And, uh, and it, as much as I love what I do, I have hard days too. But there's a freedom to really loving what you do. I really love what I do. And if there's sometimes like when you have a job and then you, and you're like, oh man, I wish I could just quit today. And then you would never go back to it. I don't think that. I think if, if I wanted to do something else, I would want to be at another place doing the same thing, doing coding in some form or some way, you know? So that's, that's part of what you've always, what you would always want to shoot for in your professional life, right? You always want to hit that success thing. And notice it's, it's not about, oh, I want this because I want this more money, more money. No, this is what really makes me happy. When you do what makes you happy, the money will show up. Don't worry about it. I'm just saying, but if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And that, I feel like I'm doing. So, yeah, I don't know. That's my advice for today anyway. <laughs> so, I hope you'll join me tomorrow. Uh, I will be doing the breakdowns of the symbols. It's, it's a back to the basics episode. Um, and it's going to be the symbols in the CPT book or the outpatient procedure book. Uh, but I'm going to be breaking down all the symbols and talking about it so that way you guys can sort of get an idea because those symbols mean the world of difference when you're looking at these codes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. But if you're interested in coding quizzes or coding um, crosswords, because I do crossword puzzles to help you with uh, medical terminology, I have a Patreon channel. I hope you'll consider supporting me there. It's um, patreon.com slash medical coding with blue. I'll leave the link down in the description box below. But the supporter levels start out at $1 per month and you get access to all that. So uh, I will go ahead and wrap this one up. But if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.